Um, yeah, there we are. Okay, so um, thank you. Thank you, Valentina. Thank you, Carlo. And uh, thank you for giving me the chance to present uh, the work that I that I had the chance to 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 do with the with the the, the Roberto Franceschi uh, scholarship. Um, today I present Rescue on Stage: Border Enforcement and Public Attention in the Mediterranean Sea. This is work in which I I study border enforcement policy in the Mediterranean context, its consequences for migrants and its determinants. Um, so border enforcement is a policy that virtually every high income country engaging and it's a policy with uh, conflicting policy objectives. On the one end, it aims to reduce irregular migration, but on the other end, it tries to ensure that migrants are treated humanely in the process. Uh, this, this contrast is really apparent in the Mediterranean context where migrants leave from North African shores in order to reach Europe and they do so on unseaworthy boats. Now, European authorities intercept those boats in order to avoid tragedies, but they keep rescues from occurring close to North, Africa sh North African shores in order to deter uh, future migration. So in a way, policy views a, tra uh, a trade-off between increasing safety for migrants uh, by going and, and saving them close to where they live uh, and, and, and preventing future departures by inviting them. Um, and to understand how policy trades off uh, these two objectives, it's important to keep in mind uh, the interaction between migrants, smugglers, governments, but also public scrutiny in destination countries. Indeed, border enforcement and irregular migration is generally is subject to uh, high public attention in, in Europe. And, and this might create complex uh, political, uh, political trade-offs. And uh, in, in particular, migration has been a hotly debated issue um, for a long time now uh, in our political debate. And anecdotally, we have seen that uh, uh, newsworthy events have mattered in how policymakers set, uh, set border enforcement policy in this context. In 2013, for example, Operation Mare Nostrum started in the wake of a large shipwreck and two shipwrecks in 2015 prompted, uh, uh, prompted the, the increase in the geographical scope of rescue operations during Operation Triton. Um, so this paper, in light of, of these motivations, aims to answer two research questions. The first is how do policymakers balance migrant safety and deterrence when setting rescue policy? And to answer this question, I study policy choices on where migrants are rescued, so how far from uh, Libyan shores. Um, and I focus on this policy instrument because this was the key policy tool from 2014 to 2017 in the central Mediterranean route of migration. I quantify uh, the effect of distance uh, from Libya of rescues on migration outcomes. In particular, I show that the uh, distance increases that risk relying on exogenous variation coming from maritime traffic. And in particular, a 10 kilometer in increase in rescue distance, which is roughly half of a standard deviation, increases uh, the, the likelihood of, uh, of dying at sea by two percentage points. Um, while um, at the same time, in decreasing distance increases future departures. So um, in, uh, increasing distance by 10 kilometers um, reduces departures after one week by 13%. Uh, according to my, my estimates. And so in light of, of these two uh, main elements, uh, so this, this main trade-off that, uh, that I see in the data, I estimate a dynamic structural model of border enforcement, where I start, that I used to establish policymakers' willingness to accept that in order to reduce arrivals and the value of a statistical migrant life for policymakers as revealed by their actions. The second research question that I am to answer with this paper is how does public attention influence policymakers' choices? I use Google searches data about migration and use articles data from Fativa. And I find that public attention, specifically searches here, um, increase migrant safety, um, in, increase mi migrant safety in the following way. Uh, one standard deviation increases in searches, reduces rescue distance by 0.3 standard deviations. So um, increasing safety for migrants. And what I show within uh, my model is that uh, the mechanism for this to happen and a likely one is that temporary increases in attention make uh, the policymaker more impatient. Like, let me explain myself. Um, and in a temporary increase in, in, in public attention um, 
make the policymaker more willing to accept future departures in order to improve uh, safety for migrants today and prevent visible deaths. Um, and the effect uh, is persistent both within my model and within uh, reduced form estimates. So uh, let me, for the sake of time and in order to, to use your, your, precious, your precious time today, uh, just focus on the second research question, research question for the purpose of, of, of communicating my work in this workshop. Um, the literature I talk to with my work relates both to border enforcement, and let me just say here that the, reader, the literature on border enforcement in Europe and in the Mediterranean context is quite novel, um, and also it, it contributes to the literature on um, media attention and public attention and how they affect policy making. And I show that both attention, volatility and persistent uh, matter in, in this context. So um, to, to carry out this project, I relied on uh, a novel and, and an unexplored data set of rescue uh, interception locations for migrants traveling from Libya on the central Mediterranean route of migration. This is a data set that I obtained from Frontex and it reports geolocation for the universe of rescue operations. Now here I depict on map uh, these uh, rescue interceptions in the period from 2014 to 2015. What we observe is that uh, rescue interceptions cluster in front of the coast of Libya around the cities of Sabrata and Tripoli, but they also display um, considerable uh, ge geographical spread. And in the period instead of 2016-17, rescued move closer to the, to, the Libya, to the Libyan coast, still clustering around the previous two cities. Um, so um, the other important uh, piece of data that I use in, in this research is attention to migration and how it evolves over time. And in particular, I use uh, Google searches about migration and news articles. In this graph, I depict the evolution of, of both of these variables. And as you can see, there is considerable uh, variation over time in the short term. And uh, what I show is that uh, this variation uh, comes from extremely large events in the rescue area, such as uh, this peak in April 2015 that I'm lighting in the slide, where uh, that was generated by uh, two large shipwrecks cl claiming the lives of more than 1,000 migrants. And, and in, in other cases, though, uh, peaks are generated by uh, important uh, by events that are that have a, a smaller, uh, a comparably smaller death toll, for example, or that has more in nature, however important, such as uh, the death of a drone uh, Syrian toddler, uh, Alan Kurdi, whose body washed up on Turkish shore uh, in November 2015. And here I'm depicting the peak generated by this news uh, in, 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 my, in my graph here. Um, the important and last point that I want to make in, uh, in, with this slide is that there's a considerable co correlation between uh, measuring um, attention with migration articles and searches, which is striking because uh, migration articles, uh, I, I collected them uh, using a very fine grade selection of terms um, relating to migration. Now, let me fly over the model and in particular uh, over its structure. Um, so in my model, in a nutshell, uh, migrants uh, buy crossings for, from smugglers and travel uh, from Libya to Italy at risk of, of shipwreck. Now the policymaker chooses where to save migrants. However, higher distance implies a uh, high, high, higher risk for migrants. And that's something that I established uh, using exogenous variation in, in maritime traffic. Um, now, migrants and smugglers forecast future distance with present one, and so future departures decrease uh, with present distance. And that's uh, something that I explore um, uh, using high frequency data on the location of rescue interceptions joined with departures. Now, the policymaker viewing this trade off minimizes present and future deaths and arrivals. And it views an intertemporal trade-off between safety and deterrence. So uh, increasing safety for migrants um, may come at the cost of increasing departures tomorrow. So um, what I do in this paper is I also augment this intertemporal trade-off by, um, by, by um, stating that policymakers care more about outcomes in high attention period when they are more visible. Um, in particular, let me elaborate with uh, some reduced form evidence on this point. Uh, so the impact of attention on, on rescue distance is the first thing that I want to show. Um, and 
to quantify the impact of, of searches on distance, I estimate uh, um, uh, I estimate regressions of distance on uh, attention and different lags uh, by controlling for long-term variation, so with year and quarter of the year fixed effects, uh, but also for an auto, uh, allowing for an autocorrelated error structure. And I find that here, uh, I show my results in this graph, uh, you can see at time zero, the, uh, the, the, the time of the rescue, and uh, um, um, on the, on the right-hand side, uh, you, you have future attention, and on the left-hand side, uh, you have past levels of attention. Now, what you can see is that attention in the past has a negative effect on distances, and it becomes um, significant uh, uh, after, after one month and a half. Uh, however, uh, it displays an amplifying and persistent pattern um, and here notice that uh, the, the confidence intervals that I'm displaying are correct, uh, are both erroneously corrected for the many hypotheses I'm testing. Um, I also show that this effect is, uh, is persistent to instrumenting um, attention with newsworthy sports events. Um, however, I want to focus on other parts of the paper for today. So uh, in particular, first, um, um, do policymakers or NGOs drive the effect in this case? And what I do in order to document whether which which is the more likely explanation is I interact the the uh, the value of attention at a given time with the proportion of migrants saved by the NGOs in a given period going from zero to one. Here in this table, I display these regressions separately for different lags of attention and NGO involvement. And um, as you can see, uh, consistently, attention has a negative effect, as I was saying before. However, uh, the NGO involvement in the rescue area tends to reduce uh, this effect. And uh, this becomes apparent um, on, the, on the third to, to sixth lag. So in a way, this seems to say that institutions, so Frontex or, or the Italian government, are at the heart of this uh, correlation between attention uh, and distance rather than, than NGOs. Now, uh, another thing. To go. Sorry? Three minutes to go. Three minutes? Yeah. Okay, so let me, uh, let me uh, go to, to the substance uh, of the model. Uh, so the important part that of, of, of my model are that um, uh, the policymaker minimizes stats and uh, arrivals at the same time, but it views them, uh, it views um, deaths and arrivals as, as more important to, to his or her loss when attention is higher. Okay, and that's the, the main uh, element of uh, relating to attention of my model. Now, what this means if that is, is there is a, a shock to attention hitting, um, here I plot some impulse response functions coming from the estimated model, uh, when uh, uh, when a shock to attention hits, uh, distance decreases, um, and it does so um, in an amplified and persistent way. Why it is um, amplified? Because uh, a first uh, decrease in distance results in a higher level of departures, which lower um, uh, distance even more because the policymaker views a higher risk of shipwrecks for, for migrants, uh, for, for, for many more migrants. Um, and, uh, uh, what is also interesting about the, the dynamics of attention that I focus on in this presentation is that uh, um, they are dependent of, on the level of, of, persistent that, of persistence of the attention shock. And in particular, if an attention shock is more persistent, then it is less important in the eyes of the policymaker. Why? Because attention here um, really um, uh, really um, affects the intertemporal trade-off that the policymakers uh, views by uh, making more, uh, more the present more relevant with respect to the future. Now, if attention increases uh, temporarily, say just for this period, and then it reverts back to its level, then the present becomes uh, much more important than, than the future period. However, if attention increases forever, then it will increase the value of having, uh, say, good outcomes for the policymaker, both in the present and in the future. And then it will uh, uh, sort of leave the, the incentives of the policymaker unchanged. So um, in conclusion, in this paper, I use high-frequency georeference data on rescue interceptions in the Mediterranean Sea 
to establish the following uh, facts. The policymakers face a safety arrival trade-off when setting border enforcement policy, and this trade-off is intertemporal. Further, the public attention influences how the trade-off is solved. Uh, using a structural model of policy setting, I show that uh, uh, historical policy has resulted in high at toll. Uh, sorry, I didn't have the time to go through this today. Uh, and especially that public attention has a persistent impact, and that persistent attention itself uh, reduces its influence on policy. So temporary shocks are more in, important in affecting uh, policy in this context. So, thank you for your attention. I, I'll stop here for, for questions. Thank you, Giacomo. Thank you, Giacomo, for your amazing presentation and your amazing work. We have a question coming from the uh, audience. So Asia from uh, um, the network Franceschi uh, would like to ask you something. So Asia, please switch your camera on and your mic. Hello. Uh, hello, Giacomo. Thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Very interesting. Uh, I'm uh, Asia Pisarevska from Erasmus uh, University, Rotterdam. Uh, and I'm interested, maybe I didn't catch it very well, but which language did you use uh, for searches and for news articles? And then which policymakers did you consider? European, Italian, English? Uh, can you please elaborate on this? Thanks. Sure. Great and important question. Um, so the language uh, and, and, uh, and, and uh, that I'm using for Google searches and uh, for articles is Italian. So I'm focusing on Italy in terms of public attention. Um, and the policymakers I, I am considering are um, the Italian government and Frontex. Uh, um, now, uh, the important uh, point that I have to stress for the purpose of this presentation is that they tend to share similar objectives in terms of both recognizing that reducing that is an objective, but also recognizing deterrence for irregular migration as an objective in policy. Uh, if there, if there are other questions, I'll stop here to, to answer them. Thank Otherwise, you. I can go on. Are there any, any other questions from the audience? OK, I Thank recommend you. that you can uh, register in the chat for questions. So uh, Giacomo, you have two minutes more if you want to add so, something. So yeah, feel yeah, feel yeah, yeah, can I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Carlo, do you want to say something? No, just maybe it's not even a question, it's a provocation. But after reading uh, your paper, don't you think that after reading your paper, policymakers now have a third policy instrument in their hand? <laughs> so yeah. moving away attention from the cost, probably in the interior of uh, North Africa. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let, me, uh, let me stress this point. I think this is uh, really interesting. I'm... Um, looking at the case of uh, the 2014-2017 the, the uh, political climate, which was a, a political climate really shying away from attention to migration. And uh, this is a bit different from, say, the political climate that we observed in, uh, for example, in, uh, in 2000. 1819, uh, where uh, Lega was uh, was a part of the government uh, in Italy, and there I think policy at that point was really uh, using attention as an instrument, using standoffs, etc. Um, and 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 I think this is an important avenue that I'd like to probably uh, study in the future and see how really the government now. Uh, aside from my research, which I think is not their main concern, uh, really takes into account um, attention and tries to influence it in the first place. Yeah. Um, if I can also add, uh, do we have 30 seconds? You have 30 seconds, yes. And uh, Alessio, if you want to write your question here in the chat, then we can um, um, send this question directly to Giacomo, because unfortunately we don't have um, ah, okay, so let me just thank Fondazione Franceschi because a, a part that I haven't had the time to show this work um, was uh, was really so wouldn't have been possible without Fondazione Franceschi. It was like in the midst of the slides I had to jump. Um, I had uh, the chance to collect uh, and to uh, classify in terms of political leaning. Uh, newspaper articles about migration in Italy, and they were really instrumental in showing that the effects that they find are driven by objective coverage rather than 
coverage leaning on uh, on some political side um, and i think that's uh, yeah that's something that i wanted to communicate also about the dynamics of attention and also to touch a, a bit upon uh, carlos point so thank you so much <laughs>